Well, welcome to those who are here this morning, as well as to those who are with us online. We're happy to have you here for our worship on this 20th Sunday after Pentecost. For those who are with us here, you can follow along with our service for Holy Eucharist uh, simply by looking in your bulletin. For those who are with us online, you can follow along with the links in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started now with our worship for Holy Eucharist. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, Hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray thee that thy grace may always proceed and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Seek the Lord and live, for he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel, with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice into wormwood, and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor, and take from them levies of grain. You have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate, e hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 <clears throat> Read with me responsibly from Psalm 90. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning so that we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the pleasure of the days that you have looked on us and the years in which our servants have chosen you. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. 
In the graciousness of the Lord our God, be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A second lesson from Hebrews. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go. Sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers, and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. 
The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Today in Hebrews, we are told these words. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Here's what those words mean to me. As I've said in our past two baptisms, or past three actually now, um, our past two baptismal services, my hope is that, particularly for these young children, that they will never have a moment in their lives when they don't know God's presence. And that's particularly important to me because that's the experience that I was fortunate enough to grow up in. I didn't have a moment where I didn't feel God's presence there with me. And part of that was because of the school I went to, part of that was from church, and part of that was from my home life as well. I was really fortunate to have parents who both at various times taught Sunday school. And I was also fortunate that they provided me with the resources to be able to hear God more fully. Resources like the Children's Illustrated Bible. So when I got to the point that I was in middle school, I had this love for the Word of God. And that led me to go through and read all of the Bible. And that's not uh, an easy feat. That's not something that I would recommend anyone just do straight uh, from beginning to end. But it was an important task for me to take on. And in that task, in reading through the scriptures, I found God's presence more and more. I could feel God there with me as I was reading these words. I could feel God's presence there, helping lead me and guide me in understanding that word all that much more. And one of the things I found as I went through this task, as I was feeling God's presence with me, as I was feeling God teaching me, God was also training me so that I could go and start to understand these words for myself. And in taking that time to listen, in taking that time to understand what it is that God was saying through his word, what I found was that my own life, my own thoughts were being changed by what God was presenting. And I found those changes occurring over time and at various moments within my life. And one of those moments was in my studies in college. And in going through 1 Corinthians, I saw what Paul had to say about community, and specifically what Paul had to say about our community, our community, the church, how we're all called to be together, how we need to rely on one another. 
And I'm coming to this understanding helped me, not just in my time in college, but in the time afterwards, to see what that Christian community was there for, to see my place in it, but also to lean on it, to lean on it on those times that I really needed my church, my Christian community, especially in those times as I was transitioning from college into early adulthood. Later, as I went out to Montana to serve with my mentor at the cathedral out there, I found another understanding coming to me through the scripture, once again through Paul's words. And it was there I saw what Paul had to say about the divisions in the church, those divisions we see between our individual parishes, but also that we see between our denominations. And one of the things that I came to realize is that those things that divide us, those things that separate us, are so silly because we're all here to serve Jesus Christ. We're all here to serve Jesus as our Lord. So all these other things don't matter. And that was important for me to realize in my own times of silliness, my own times of seeing these differences. And it helped me to come together with others, come together to serve our Lord Jesus all that much better in this world. And that was something that stuck with me, that I continued to learn from, that I continue to see examples of, all the way even to my time in seminary serving at churches like Holy Comforter in Atlanta, Georgia. I continue to see what scripture had to say to me, how it changed how I viewed things, in my time in seminary as a whole as well. There, in looking back to Genesis, I saw that the command to be fruitful and multiply, to look after our young, isn't given to just Adam and Eve. It's given to all humanity. This helped me to realize that the call to look after the next generation, to look after those who are growing up, isn't given to just those who have biological children. It's given to all of us. We are all called to help raise that next generation. And it's in these words that made me think more about how we all come together to help support and build up future generations. It also helped me stop and think about my own place within the wider human race. And as I've continued in my ordained ministry, I've seen what Hebrews is talking about when it says that the word of God also acts as a judge on ourselves. As we've heard these past months, there are these stories in scripture of people who don't always succeed in following God's will, to say the least. We heard the story of the Israelites as they were wandering in the desert and wailing against God. We've even heard the stories of great men like Elijah as they contemplated leaving their ministry, leaving their service to God behind. And as I've said before, it's so easy to judge these people, to look at them and say these people did a lot of wrong. It might even be easy for us to say at least I'm not like that. But what I've found is that in looking at these stories, they're often 
a mirror, a mirror that we hold up to ourselves to see those times that we have let God down, that we have not done what we need to in order to best serve God in this world. And so it's stories like these that warn us. They give us a different path, a path that can help us turn back to God. And I'll say for myself that these stories have helped me in those times where I've needed that push, where I've needed to turn back and start to serve God a little bit more and a little bit better. Now, I don't share these stories, this journey, in order to say something good or even to say something bad about myself. My hope is that in my story, you might see something that can help you in your journey. My hope is that what I've just said, my own story in my journey with the Word of God, with seeing it as living and active, that you can start to see that Word as living and active for you as well. My hope, at the very least, is that maybe you'll see something that can help point you, if not give you hope, in moving forward in your own lives and faith, on your own journey your own path. Because the thing is, the Word of God is living and active. It does still speak to us today. Yes, the words of Scripture were written many, many years ago, but they were written to show the people of that time what God was saying to them. And we see it continue to say things to us. Our hope in listening to Scripture is that it changes us. That it changes how we think, how we see the world, how we view our place in the world. Our hope is it can better help us to serve God. But it is living and active. It is still speaking to us. God is still speaking to us through these words, even to this day. And that's why we have this portion of our service, the Word of God part of our worship, part of our liturgy. Because in this portion, Heart, we continue to see how it is that God speaks to us through these words of Scripture. And we also see how God speaks to us through preaching. That's why we have the sermon. So that we can start to suss out what it is that God is saying to us still through these words of Scripture. My hope is that you will take the time to listen to what it is that God has to say to you. My hope, too, is that you will have patience. Because it's often not in just one moment that we hear what God is saying to us. Often we hear that word over time. At the very least, it's over time that we see that word changing us. So my hope is, is that in coming to worship, you will continue to listen to what it is that God has to say to you as individuals and as a community. And my hope for each and every one of you is that you will take the time outside this service to listen and to hear what it is 
what God has to say to you in God's Word, that living and active Word. And now let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, the God of God. and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Dre, our priest, as well as Francis, Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople, and all other denominational leaders, that they most, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. 
we beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Tom, our governor, Charles, our mayor, and all our other local elected officials, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee, O thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor. Ike, Claire, Robert, Dwight, to him and her family, Joy, Howard, Laura, Blake, Cameron, Mike, Sally, Ben, Helen, Barb, Lucia, Alexandra, Isabella, Linda, Liz, Shauna, Tammy, Patty, Nancy, Christine, Rich, Andrew, Tom, Jimmy, Doreen, Anthony, Stephanie, Jimmy, June, Geraldine, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. Wayne, Michelle, Fred, Tenley, Cynthia, Dorothy, Jim, and Jean. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating anniversaries this week. Tom and Helen, Jeff and Susan, Scott and Elizabeth. We pray for the children, teens, and college students of this parish, and for those serving in the military. We pray for the life and witness of our companion parish, St. Mark A. and Zion Church, Newtown, and St. Paul's, Levittown. Lord, look graciously on thy church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for thy people and equip us for our ministries. And we also bless thy holy name for thy servants departed in this life, in thy faith and fear, especially for Angela, Ellen, and Robert, for whom all the flowers have been given, and Christian martyrs throughout the world, beseeching thee to grant them continual good in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Joseph, her most holy spouse, Luke, our patron, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom, Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now, taking a moment of silence for reflection, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Yeah. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Please show one another a sign of peace. And peace to those who are with us online as well. You may be seated again. So if you are with us here in person, uh, once again, we're glad to have you here. Uh, you can look in your bulletin for all of the announcements for things coming up in the future. Uh, for those who are with us online, if you've not done so already, please get in touch with us so we can add you to our email list uh, so you can know all the things that are going on. Just um, a few things to point out, um, particularly with our formation. Uh, we are still doing the Horse and His Boy book study resources. Um, also, our faith fact for this week actually connects back to last week's Christian formation, uh, which was on a praying method that Nick taught us uh, this summer uh, in our music camp and then which we did a little bit of in our VBS so uh, that was a combination of Lectio Divina which was the faith fact last week and praying in color which is the faith fact for this week so please uh, go online and uh, read more about that prayer method we also have our Christian formation um, after our 10 a.m. service today. So if you can't be there in person, we do have a Zoom link, um, and that will get you in at 11.15. So but we're going to be trying uh, once again to do hybrid for that, since that seemed to work pretty well last time. Um, we will uh, be having the windows open so we get enough circulation. So we're still going to be doing everything to keep everyone safe. But if you would like to come for that, uh, please do so. If you can't make it on Zoom or in person, we will have a recording of the class available afterwards. We are still looking for a lot of people to help with our service. And in light of one of the things I said in the sermon about all of needing the help of all of us, um, one thing that we, we do need help with and that we're, we're going to need help with uh, at the end of the month uh, when I'm taking uh, some vacation time uh, is somebody to help us uh, open the doors in the morning. Um, for our Sunday service, um, to be there to open the doors, uh, to help open our windows. Um, that's something we'll need when I'm not here. And, and to be frank, uh, it's, it's something that it, it's been weighing on me. Um, I, I'm having trouble sleeping, actually, because of it. Uh, so this is very much something that would help me with my health personally. So if you, if you think you'd be willing to come early, uh, just a half hour early to open up the doors, um, please let Susan or myself know, uh, and we'll do what we can to make sure that you have a key, uh, especially since I didn't get a key until my second week here, so we'll need to make more keys uh, to, to let people be able to unlock the front door. But again, please think about that. Uh, please pray on it. Uh, if it's something you think you can do, again, just let Susan and myself know. Um, and we'll get you what you need to, to get that done. 
that's, that's all I've got for the announcements. And again, look at those uh, in detail, um, particularly because we do have other things in there, um, particularly uh, for what, we, what we're looking for right now for our food pantry. So please look at those announcements at your leisure. As we continue our service, um, before you leave today, if you're here in person, please do make sure you sign in for the service uh, in case we need to do contact tracing. Uh, and uh, as we continue into uh, the Eucharist portion of our service, uh, please know uh, we've got our, um, our offering uh, basin in the back um, as well. So if you've got an offering which you wish to give, please place it there before you leave. Uh, for those who are with us online, you can send your offering into us uh, by just mailing it into the church. But for now, let us hold up our offerings of praise and thanksgiving up to God within our hearts. Our service now continues with Eucharistic Prayer A. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, who by water and the Holy Spirit has made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth thy glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord of the high. Let blessed is thee who hath come into the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Gracious Father, in thine infinite love, thou didst make us for thyself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, thou didst mercifully send Jesus Christ, thine only begotten and eternal Son, to share our humanity, to live and die as one of us, and to reconcile us unto thee, who art the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, 
and there made an offering of himself in obedience to thy will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night in which he was betrayed unto suffering and death, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks unto thee, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his blessed death, his mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension. We offer unto thee these gifts. Sanctify them, we beseech thee, by thy Holy Spirit, that they may be for thy people the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Do thou likewise sanctify us, thy servants, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve thee in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, St. Luke, and all thy saints into the joy of thine eternal kingdom. All this we ask through thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover once for all, is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table of mercy, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of the white table. But thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always at our mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so that we eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and be in us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but to speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Our service now continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us. And that we are very members of corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to the hope of the body of the last kingdom. And that we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. To whom with me and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord shine the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. 
And now let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. See you all in the back, and we hope to see all of you online with us again soon.